Hello, good evening. Welcome to Porsche Cup Challenge. This is our final race of the Euro Global Division. Joining me in the broadcast booth with me today is Adam Morrow. If you can hear me right about now, say hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, buddy, hey. I can hear you. How's it going? Awesome. Good, man. I hope you're doing well. Uh, looking forward to this one. Last round of this. <laughs> so, wow. Sounding like your voice coming in and out. You got internet problems. I guess you're living way out in the desert or something, no? Uh, yeah, a little out here. Hopefully, it's not chopping out too bad. Let me know if it is. Yeah, we all want to hear that voice you got over there. <laughs> right now, we've got yeah, a whole it's... bunch of people qualifying. Sorry to cut you off. Is uh, I've got a whole bunch of people qualifying right now. We've got oh, Yuri Steinmeitz. I'm wondering if he's going to be qualifying or not. He may not be able to finish a lap. Yuri Steinmeitz and Philip the Hammer are trying to fight for P1 in our season championship. Uh, so how many points do all of these guys have up at the front in Pro Division? Do you got it up? Yeah. Uh, Hammer's got 462. Steinmetz 446. Lazarus actually he's got 392 so um, the top five are pretty tight when you go to Horgan Hugendorn's in fifth with Lazarus in third with 392 I think the top two Hammer and Steinmetz are pretty solidified it's going to be hard to really shake those two but up for grabs is the podium for sure yeah it's it's what a three four car battle um, unfortunately if I'm not mistaken, Gordon Ramsay has a, a penalty that he's going to have to serve where he starts from pit lane. So that may squash his championship run and hopes for the third final spot in our championships for the season. Um, but the rest of the drivers, Corey Lazarus, who is it? It's Corey Lazarus, um, um, yep, Danny Ramsey. Hugendorn, yep, and Seifert. And Seifert, so Thorsten Seifert, where is Thorsten's name? Here he is. Oh, no, he wasn't able to make a he, he was able to make a lap, 807.317. So that's quite a fast lap. I'm really curious to see how this goes with all of these local hometown boys from Germany, from Europe, who, is mo who have most likely run the ring themselves in person. So... You know, they're going to know every little nook and cranny, every little bump and uh, and bruise that you can get on this track. So really excited to see what they can do. We're going to have a, a three lap sprint followed by a four lap feature with the reverse grid top eight. So that's really going to mix a lot things up really good. Uh, Adam, you ran this track on Thursday. How was that? Uh, I at least ran parts of it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, but I mean, be honest, what are your thoughts on this track? Are you still there? Bye bye, Adam, with his internet. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's what yeah. makes really no, no, that's a bummer. There you go, there you're back in. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just trying something else here. <laughs> so yeah, how how did your Thursday go? It was a little rough. I could only put together some parts of the track there, um, but that's what makes this championship so unique. Um, you have to be able to be able to, uh, you know get through these certain types of tracks, and you have to be a well-rounded driver to to get crowned a champion like these top guys. Definitely. You know, honestly, if this was me, I'd be count trying to get every other race, every other week, as high as I could and say, hey, you know what, this is my drop week. I'm here for fun. <laughs> I can just run the track and see bloody well what happens, because uh, this is definitely not one of my specialties. Um, but, you know, some of these guys, they, they basically live on this track, and so they're going to make the best of it, that's for sure. Yeah, that's uh, interesting to see. Are those lap times real? What I'm seeing there, these top guys are running under the eight minute mark. They they are. Those are exactly the lap times that they're running. I, yeah, I'm I'm blown away. I gotta say, this is absolutely incredible how fast these guys are. It just shows how how much the hometown crowd really knows this track. <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy. Blows me away. 
Uh, let's see who's running still. We've got... I think people are just practicing out there on the ring, trying not to die. Uh, what would be your top three points for surviving and being successful on this on this race, Adam? Yeah, I thought about that. Um, you know, I think putting in laps, finishing your laps, whether it be sub eight, eight minutes or closer to the nine minute mark, you know, circulating the track, getting through, avoiding the carnage. Uh, I think there's probably two points in there. I don't think the start as is important. You know, our, our kind of bad boy there, Ramsey, the Scotsman, there, he's going to start from the back, but he, he has opportunity and plenty of time to work his way through the pack. Um, take those passes when you can get it. And, uh, you know, have some fun out there. It's the last uh, round of the season and um, uh, try to get a good showing if you can. You saw last week uh, Ryan Winfield was able to score a win finally out the whole season. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see some of these Americans. I see Hingston out there and uh, our, alas, our winner here as well is Winfield. So let's see what they can uh, dice up with the, the Euros. And we've got the likes of Rob West as well, another American in there. It looks like he's choosing not to qualify. He's going to try and be the the steady eddy and maybe not hit some walls i know he's struggled this week on this track uh so let's see if uh mr west can come through and and come through this track alive <laughs> yeah good i didn't see him down there it's good to see him out there yeah i think duncan watts trying to set a lap let's see where is he he's almost done his lap just the last few corners right here let's see where he ends up uh just heading on to this start finish line right now he's just He's cutting it real close, just passing the line before qualifying wow. is over. And he comes through 8.14 point. You know what? That is a very nice respectable lap. time. That That's faster Absolutely. than I would have gone. I think that's faster yeah. than you went. Oh, yeah, easily. <laughs> I love that livery. That's sweet. I love that car. Yeah, he says he spends more time painting his car than he does driving it. <laughs> ah, I get it. And that's what's so cool about this uh, sim, you know, you, the tinkering and, and how deep you want to take it just never ends, right? That's cool. Oh, how dare you call this a sim? This is real life. Yeah, touche. Yeah. <laughs> I just, a virtual smack to the back of the head there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here we go with... Looks like qualifying is done in about five seconds. So we're going to be able to pull up our qualifying results. Yep, there you go. The checkered flag in our qualifying. So I'm going to be able to pull up our qualifying results, run through exactly who is where and see what happened. So we've got Philip the Hammer on pole position. Congratulations, Philip Hammer, for snagging that pole position for his final race. We got Patrick Hingston in P2 for his first time in the Euro Global Division. Danny Hugendorn on third. Ryan Winfeld in fourth, our winner from Thursday. Bjorn Ritter in fifth. Gordon Ramsay qualified sixth, but will be starting in the pit lane. I've received confirmation he will be in the pit lane. Uh, Thomas Worm Jr. in seventh. Corey Lazarus in eighth. We've got Emil Koopmans in 9th, Thorsten Seifer in 10, Alexander Wilford in 11th, Phil Straforelli in 12. We got Italo Anzioso showing up once again. Love to see him back in 13. Jason Lyons, 14. Grick and Demir in 15. Duncan Watts, 16. Steve Kleis in 17. Yuri Steinmetz starting from the back. Very surprising to me, to be honest. Uh, maybe he's just not feeling the confidence at this track. So I'm really curious to see how that goes. Um, so yeah. Who is Who would be your bet for... Uh, for if we were taking bets, who's your bet for race winner? Oh, geez. I mean, I, I'm still letting that sink in with that qualified time, and Hinkston only 0.7 behind uh, with an eight-minute lap time. Jeez, that's tight. I, I'm going to go with the local boy, uh, Hammer, on this one. Like you said, uh, he's a German. Maybe he's been on this track in real life. To, uh, so I'm going to go with him. And then um, I'd like to watch how Steve Clays does. He's a new guy to the field, and um, he got bumped up to the pro division. Let's see how he cuts his teeth here, if he can keep it together. Yeah, definitely. Steve, um, how do you say is Clyes, I think it is. Yeah, like sure. Clyes, I, I think I'm getting that one right. I'm going to try that all race long and see if <laughs> what happens. I have no bloody well idea how that's going to go. Okay, the lights are up and we're about to start racing. The three lights, four lights, five lights. 
lights are off and away we go. It looks like Philip Hammer got a great start. It looks like Danny Hugendar an excellent start. Ryan Winfeld's trying to make his way up through Patrick Hinkson, not able to get through. It's looking like Philip Hammer. Oh, and Patrick Hinkson making that dive for the inside. Oh, and Duncan Watts not having a good time back there, bumping into Lazarus too. Well, Oh Holy no! Smokes, boys. Holy smokes! Luckily, we are oh, gonna oh. have two races. That is definitely not the way to start this very long race. Uh, but it looks like Patrick Hingston getting up the inside of turn one worked out, and he is ahead of the hammer with Danny Hugendorn in tow. Ryan Winfeld being challenged by who is that? Bjorn Ritter. Bjorn Ritter showing strong pace here at the Nurburgring. I'm gonna have to bet he lives real close by. He's here every week, every day, but <laughs> let's go with that. Uh, Alexander Wilford challenging Jason Lyons for the win of Amateur Division. He is now ahead of him by three spots with some real tough customers in tow. Yuri Steinmeitz trying to challenge for the win of Pro Division. So let's see how this one goes. Yeah, it's funny, you know, we, we tell like, the guys Germans are close to this track, you just never know, like, uh, where you live. You, sometimes you never go to those historic landmarks and you live right next to them. But, so, um, we'll give them a throw them a bone there if they have a bad result, but if they win, we'll, we'll give it to them. Whoa! Oh, no! Oh, wow! And Jason Lyons, Abe, oh, wow! I gotta say, that was some Tokyo Drift and Fast and Furious stuff going on there. Jason Lyons not giving up the position easy to... Um, to Yuri Steinmeitz and actually coming out on top able to keep him behind and keep some points and keep his uh, championship hopes alive. A little bit of an unfortunate situation for I think it was Duncan Watts uh, but luckily that is why we have two two races. Yep, yep exactly so that's Wilford and uh, Wilford and Lyons are close in the points too there um, so Lyons is not too far out and Wilford's putting it down doing what he needs to do stay in the front of Lyons. And I see Philip Hammers now in the lead of this race. I want to see how did that pass happen? Let's see. Here is exactly where the pass happened on Patrick Hingston. So Patrick Hingston going down that straight on the GP track. Didn't get the launch that he was looking for out of that corner. And it's just an easy door to walk through for the hammer. You say one little slight mistake, you know, and they'll, they'll just punish you for it. Let's see, uh, see what happens here. See if the hammer could duck and run. Duck and run. He will. He is trying to throw down the hammer as he's done all season showing why he is the champion of season one and potentially the champion of season two with Patrick Kingston who's now got the intentions of running against the hammer week after week starting season three testing his luck for the first time today and seeing if he can keep up yeah I mean the hammer's got a he, he's probably pretty safe for the championship i would say i mean i think he's got a locked in points why i don't want to do the math on there but he wants to finish off the season strong with some wins for sure put oh. a mark into going the next one do the math do the math oh geez forget about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah school forget about it let's work with our hands it's a lot easier that way right there we go <laughs> real work with our hands that's real work Anyways, here we go heading down into this downhill portion. I love this part of the track. You just lift a slight little bit and you fly through there. Uh, and then you're heading, now they're heading towards, I don't know the name of it, but this is one of the hardest braking zones on the entire track. Ryan Winfeld, the American driver coming at you, knowing the track really, really well. He can tell you the history of every little bit of every corner. Uh, great guy to talk to about that. And um, yeah, if you ever want to learn how to drive it fast, he's one guy that is always willing to teach you as well. Yep, that great guy, great always sharing in the forums or our Discord there. That's great. And it was good to see a good guy like him pull off a win there, like I mentioned earlier. And and this tracks, you know, he's memorized it and he's got that great uh, breaking foot. So those. Oh no, more guys getting collected here. Oh no, and that's not. Oh, and there goes Jason Lyons is now directly behind Alexander Wilfer. I want to take a look exactly how did that one happen. I think it started right about here. And oh, who's that there? And it looks like Steve Kleis, Kleis in behind there yeah. Uh, yeah. got spooked when the car in front of him went off. And so it, it's just a, <laughs> you know what? Hey, he didn't I'll want him to, he didn't want to end, see him ending in misery. So he thought he'd join him. Yeah, <laughs> what a nice guy. 
he just wanted to join him and uh you know there there you go here we're back ahead with philip the hammer he is not leaving patrick hinkson behind so this is you know i'm ex i'm really excited for next season to see how this goes between the two of these and uh how they <laughs> how they battle it out as the season goes on but for now we've got this race to, as a prediction of how it's gonna go yeah, and those top six. I mean, even uh, Rich or amateur driver, I don't think that uh, he's going to last long as an amateur driver. But look how close they are after all these twists and turns. Uh, it's pretty impressive that they're staying so close. Absolutely. Uh, I, You know what? There's a little bit of... Um, uh, how do you call it? What, when you're air wash, there's a little bit of air wash on these cars when you're this close to each other. So it's really interesting to see how they're managing that. A um, little bit of an extra understeer, so it's very high risk to be this close, but these guys, they are very competent drivers, nothing to scoff at, and uh, yeah, they're, they're really pushing their luck, and I'm sure they're going to push it all the way to the very end. That's what they do. We're here to race. And so we have, uh, is it three laps for the sprint or two? Sorry. Uh, we actually have three laps. Oh, it looks like Wilfred, even though he got bumped and there's a lot of chaos at the very beginning. We'll, ha we'll take a look at exactly what happened later on. Uh, but even though he got bumped, he's made the best of it. He's continued on and he's up to ninth. Unfortunately for nice. him, he's got Jason Lyon in 10th position. So not too far back. One spot, it may not be enough for Wilford to claim P1 in amateur division if this keeps up. Uh, so it's really interesting to see how this will play out. Yeah, Lyons has 322 points, Wilford 315, so Lyons' game plan is just to keep Wilford uh, behind him, obviously, with the main goal, but even if he's a couple of positions behind, he's got a bit of a points buffer there to, to pull it off, and, and Wilford's got to gotta set fire and just pick off as many guys as he can. Don't wait. Get out there. Oh, and there is oh. Gordon not having a good time trying to be a little bit too aggressive, perhaps, and uh, getting in contact with Steve Kleis. Oh, and there's a whole bunch of... I have no idea what's happening here. <laughs> technique there, guys. Let's get on the gas, put it behind you, and get racing. Definitely, definitely. Just let it go and keep going, keep moving on, and uh, yeah. Gherkin Demiri, I think he's missing his front hood. <laughs> seems to the last few rounds there is he looks like a warrior battle scoring all the time coming through the field there so uh, he's still up three positions and lots of racing left just keep circulating you never know what will happen definitely we got ryan winfield danny hugendorn bjorn ritter as they're heading on the start finish line this is the very first lap now complete coming around patrick hinkson is in second followed by Danny Hugendorn in third, Ryan Winfeld and Bjorn Rare. Looks like Thomas Worm Jr. showing his competence once again. He's definitely been up near the front before, and he's up at the front once again. Thorsten Seifert, damage on his car, so I'm sure he's not having the best of times. But being up in seventh position, it's a great spot to be. He's in that reverse grid. It's a great great spot it looks like alexander wilford in eighth is also in that reverse grid so that's going to help him a lot um so <laughs> jason lyons he's gonna have to put some work in to try and catch him he's uh, look at that he's actually catching wilford he's 3.3 seconds behind now 3.1 so wow we got two more laps to go lions may catch him snag that reverse grid top eight and uh really c capture <laughs> amateur division right here in this race and it's gonna be down to the wire gonna be wild eh? if he could pull that off either, either of these guys you know i mean the, the front guys are setting such a fast pace and um not to say these guys are slow but they're just a little bit on a different uh, trajectory as the other guys it's gonna be interesting how the fast guys can pick apart and get through because it could be pretty tricky when you have different brake zones or different momentum through some of these corners or if you don't know the track like uh, like i do i kind of hesitate a lot and people just blow by me down these long straightaways and uh, kudos good to see thomas Burn jr back out there yeah de last round. definitely it looks like danny hugendorn's had a few lucky turns and he's now starting to break away from ryan winfeld who's been pressuring him all race long and that's put uh that's put 
Bjorn Ritter into a position where he wants to now make a pass on Ryan Winfeld. And it looks like he's getting as close as he can, applying that pressure, saying, you better speed up, bud, or else I'm going to make your, the pass on you. And, yeah. of course, Thomas Worm Jr., not too far off of them. Uh, he's in position to get ahead of them if any mistakes are made, so... Absolutely. Winfield's probably saying, you know, Rick, Bjorn Ritter, Rick Show there, just go away, leave me alone. You're amateur, you're in a different class. Let me have a little breather here, send it in here and get a good spot for the, the feature, but don't work like that. They're racers and want to pass each other. Definitely. I got to say, Bjorn Ritter uh, is a driver who started out on the slower side, of course, just as everyone does. You got to start somewhere. And now, absolutely incredible how much he's improved over such a short period of time. Bjorn Ritter is quite a driver that we've seen in the last few weeks. I can see him qualifying himself right into the pro division next season. No problem whatsoever. He is an amateur no longer. Oh wow, up, up you go, uh, and that makes sense, I really like watching him, uh, he starts up front and he doesn't seem to be rattled too much, he he puts his laps down, doesn't care who's behind him or who's showing the wheel, he just stays in his own race and, and puts it down, so that, that's a great quality to have. And here we're following along with Rob West, who he was telling me that he hasn't had the best of luck at this track, but he's turned that around. I think he just picked up a rabbit's foot from the corner store, and look, he's up seven spots total from where he qualified, which he didn't even qualify. So, oh, and you can see that front end getting wild, going way up in the air. He's on it. He is on it. He is actually outperforming all of his expectations right here, and hope you know, if. The more good things I say, the more likely someone crashes, and I just, I really hope that doesn't happen to Rob West here. Yeah, yeah, maybe we take the camera off him, let him do his thing there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan Watts is behind Rob West. It looks like he's 30 seconds behind. I don't think he fared too well in that start. Um, we're going to go a little further back. Corey Lazarus is looking like he's in the pits. I think he took the toe. Yuri Steinmetz also had to take the toe. Misha Burger, I'm not sure where is Misha Burger. I don't think he's on track at all. Um, who is it? Gordon Ramsay is also in the pits. We have a few people in the pits for us. And uh, while we're talking about that, let's take a look at the race start and exactly what happened. Uh, we're going to go to a chop review and just see what happened at that, that race start. Job. Oh, and it looks like Duncan Watts tapped the grass. Oh, okay. Fortunately, Duncan Watts was pushed out to the side, but of course, there is a lot of chaos. Just a little bit of an innocent mistake, uh, and it's easy to make them. Causes a lot of chaos for a lot of drivers. Unfortunately, just a little, like I said, innocent mistake. Uh, you get the wheel on the grass just a little bit, and uh, yeah, I feel bad for the guys, all of them. Yeah, it was quite the carnage there especially you know with all these turns what is a hundred hundred and some turns they said and that happened on t1 so it's a stinger definitely and that's actually the main reason i was a huge proponent to having two races a sprint and a feature anything can happen and you don't want people's races just be completely done and out and one race you want yeah. them to have a second chance at it just to you know a second chance to prove themselves it gives two things obviously the second chance to prove yourself but also for the people at the very front you have to prove yourself twice that is the porsche cup challenge that we've been looking for all season long and we're always going to continue to offer that and we're just here to try and claim and find find and claim our fastest driver of the season not just one race but every race to put that whole package together especially with that reverse grid the guy with the fastest pace is not going to win on that reverse grid you also have to have that racecraft and that's what philip the hammer has shown patrick hingston of course is the win the champion of our north american our america's division and he is now testing his luck against the hammer for the first time and i just i cannot wait to see how it goes next season with Hingston and the Hammer battling it out. Holy smokes, talk about a head-to-head, -head, you know, they're both champions in separate divisions. This is exactly what we want to see. These two guys out front, uh, no excuses, who's going to be the fastest putting it down. And let me tell you, they are gapping the field. These guys are on a different planet right now, just flying. 
Oh, I think they found a spaceship and they've already taken off. This is absolutely wild. These car these cars are gl yeah, they're getting air. They are sliding out everywhere and they're pushing their luck all the way to the finish line. I I'm blown away. These guys are are almost 9 seconds ahead of third place of Ryan Winfeld, who was our race winner on Thursday. Wow. That's all I got to say. It looks like Oh, it looks like Ryan Winfeld's made a pass on Danny Hugendorn. Uh, I want to take... Uh, let's see if Patrick Kingston, he is close enough to try and make a pass on the hammer. I want to follow along with this before I switch back to that replay. Does Patrick Kingston make the move or not? Is he going to be happy in tow to the hammer or does he want that spot? Looks like they're getting... Oh, and they're not able... He's not able to make it work. But you know who is? Danny Hugendorn is trying to take his position back off of Ryan Winfell. Here we go. Two wide down the back straight. Under breaking. This is... Oh, no! Oh, boys. Oh, Rich. Oh, oh. and that is definitely... Oh, no! And that is definitely Ouch. not what you wanted to see. Danny Hugendorn um, forgetting to hold his brakes is just ha not having a good time. Um, hitting Thomas Worm Jr. Ryan Winfeld going in for that fast repair for Ryan Winfeld. We've got one more lap to go. Danny Hugendorn's going to have to go in for that fast repair. Thomas Worm Jr. being extremely smart about staying out, and that's going to put him into fourth position ahead of both those drivers. Of course, the black flag doesn't have to be served like it did in the past. Good call. Man, what a violent crash. That's probably one of the fastest part of the tracks coming into that braking zone. Just those boys got whipped around there. And got to love Thomas Worm Jr. He just always seems to find these sweet spots to, to capitalize on other people's mistakes. And he's always there just waiting for something like that. Nice move. Definitely. And you know what that's actually done? Look, Jason Lyons and Alexander Wilfer are now into the reverse grid top eight. Incredible. Unreal. Unreal. So, And here you go. Emil Koopman's in eighth spot is now in that reverse grid top eight. Ryan Winfield has one lap to try and build that um, or actually close that gap to Emil Koopman's and take that spot back and get himself in the f in first position for the next race. He's pretty close. He may be able to do it. It's anybody's guess if he'll actually uh, be able to capitalize on that or not on this fast repair that he's taken. Uh, I want to actually take a look at how did how did that all start with Danny with Ryan Winfeld passing Danny. Let's see how did he make that pass. Oh, and it looks like Danny Hugendorn got a little bit wild on an exit, and that just allowed him to walk through the open doorway. Man, Winfield got some drive out of that bank corner there, too. I think he's using some of his real-life skills there, getting a hard on the gas powering out there. He's no stranger for getting that car, that Porsche, sideways coming out of corner. So just sometimes you got to throw caution to the wind. Boom, he made it stick. Absolutely no stranger to danger. Gherkin the beer <laughs> with his hood is gone, deciding to carry on anyways. And you know what? Going for that fast repair may not always be the best bet. As you can see, Danny Hugendorn here is um, taking that fast repair, and that's put him down a lot of spots. Corey oh, Lazarus, sure. though. So it's Corey Lazarus is in third position, am I right, for the season championships? Yep, Roger that. 392 points. 392. And where's Corey? Or sorry, where's Danny? Uh, Hugendorn's got 385. So that's seven points difference. And so with that uh, that attempt to try and make that pass, you know, sometimes you wonder, do you want that position? How bad do you want it? Do you, you just try and calculate in your head where are people in the season championships? And am I... Am I um, making a mistake by making this pass attempt, or should I just stay in the spot I'm in and, and hold out? Uh, that may not have been the, the move to make for Danny. It's put him really close to where Corey is at, so um, anybody's guess how that's going to go. And of course, Thorsten Seifert is up in the fourth position, being challenged and chased by Thomas Worm Jr. Uh, Thorsten Seifert may now be in position to take third in the season at this rate yep yeah. yeah, ramsey's ramsey's uh you know it's still a sprint ramsey got is leading these guys but just by six points back to seifert there so hugendorn and seifert they need to get ahead of uh stay ahead of ramsey to move up some positions and then they could jockey themselves back and forth as well um man look at koopman's koopman's must have been 
caught up in that first uh, corner horror there, and he's picking his way back up through the field, getting in that top eight. And back to what you're saying there, Mike. I think um, in the sprint race on this track, yeah, like get try to get through that top eight, even top ten uh, for the feature would be would be the game plan uh, f if I was looking at it because um, that'll put you in a good spot for the feature where you can maximize those points. It looks like Ryan Winfield has caught up to Emil Koopmans. And is he going to try and make that pass? Ryan Winfield, not one to back out of most opportunities. But uh, let's see how this goes as they head down this hill towards that real awkward braking zone where it's easy to lock a tire. And Ryan Winfield trying to poke a nose, say he wants through. Emil Koopmans not giving it up easy. Yeah, this is a fight for the for the reverse grid. These will put them in first place off the start, so this is going to be a dog fight. Uh, clearly, Winfield's not traumatized by that 200 mile an hour get off he had there. He's right back on him. You know, definitely, and that's what makes uh, that's what makes or breaks a race driver is the ability to put your head down and get back in it and keep going because you know you never win anything by giving up and here you go ryan winfield oh, is still in it around the outside what a beautiful move from number 53 ryan winfield as he goes up the hill emil koopmans now has an excellent car to draft all the way to the finish line most likely philip the hammer actually going to jump up to the lead as he goes through the carousel for the very last time in our sprint race has built a bit of a gap to patrick hinkson patrick hinkson is being challenge for the very first time i gotta say he's not as challenged in our thursday america's races like he is today against the hammer and uh so he's definitely testing himself out there bjorn ritter i'm the, he is once again an amateur no more is 14 seconds behind hints uh behind the hammer showing his competence on the nurburgring we got thorsten seifert he is uh, he's that cougar that's hitting, hiding in the bushes. You never expect it. All of a sudden, he's there, and he's there to capitalize on every moment. And yeah, and there you go. Alexander Wilford. The beginning of this season, I gotta say, it was quite a disaster for Wilford. If you remember Fuji, Adam, if you remember Fuji? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Not that, not Wilford's drive though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the only one that remembers Wilford's drive, I think, is Wilford because of yeah. uh, the bowling ball incident, where uh, he uh, he missed his breaking point, went into the crowd of cars, and I think he took out the entire marching band. Uh, it was okay. definitely not a highlight for him. But yeah, he, I remember that now. <laughs> Wilford has for certain turned his racing career in the porsche cup challenge series around he's now up in fifth position in this race he is challenging for p1 in amateur division and uh and that just shows um what we offer here is not just uh not just you know not just getting better but the ability to learn grow and uh and grow yourself into a better person better driver that's what's so cool about the the discord channel you've set up all such a good group of guys and you know just you know as an example you know you got your monitor i got the same monitor then we're able to hop on the phone or all through discord chat and say hey what are you doing here and there and uh, you help each other find a little extra if it's just visuals or time look at winfield just hang, hanging oh out my there. gosh hanging that car out to dry jason lyons in seventh position he's got to decide how is he gonna manage this he's got two cars behind him that have been closing in as this lap has been going on uh, I gotta take a quick look at where is the hammer he's right near the end but I can't look away from this yet I will watch hammer cross that finish line for the last time don't worry and he, oh my gosh lion he is keeping his cool and not going for those walls that is a great drive from line Ryan Winfield I'm sure is gonna take advantage of this straightaway but here we go with Pat, uh, Philip Hammer coming across that finish line winning our sprint race congratulations Philip Hammer congratulations Patrick Hinkson for coming That's in second crazy. what a beautiful drive not many can challenge the hammer and you've put on a real great show for all of us tonight Patrick Hinkson Jordan Ritter coming in third and here oh we gotta take a look at th this battle as it goes Ryan Winfield is actually making that pass where is Tom Where's Thomas Worm Jr.? Something happened to Thomas Worm Jr. Oh, he has aero damage, so he's not able to keep up with these yeah. drivers who have the full speed of their cars. Great eye, Mike. 
And Jason Lyons taking those curbs like a champ, able to stick to the rear bumper, Ryan Winfeld, and slot himself into. Oh, look at this. Koopman's trying to get that spot. And oh, oh, Koopman's got wants damaged. that. And Don't let him buy. <laughs> and Koopman's may oh and Koopman's has made the pass on Thomas Worm Jr. Oh, at the wow. very final last second to slot himself into that reverse grid top eight. What a wow. <laughs> wow, Another what a drive. I love that reverse grid. It kind of makes like a, a, a race within a race, you know, like uh, it's a battle for that. In, in motocross, we have that last chance qualifier. So you got to be in a top 10 or top 12, whatever it is. So uh, it's like gloves are off you could really hammer a guy and get yourself in the main event and if you don't you're go packing home you're done for the night so that's what's so cool about that uh, reverse grid yeah some people will not say they don't like it some people will say you know what i absolutely love it it's a little bit of a love hate thing i gotta say personally i wasn't a fan at the beginning uh and i've I've really gr grown to love it. Uh, anyone who's in P5, 6, 7, 8, all of them, they're at risk to be passed because if you're in seventh position, you want to get further away from eight because whoever's in ninth wants eighth and so on, you know? So you want to get away from the eighth position as fast as you can. And it creates so many races within a race. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely love it because you could have a guy that comes in here with some ridiculous IRA and just stomp on you, but you know he's gonna win the sprint. He's gonna be an eighth. How does he get through the pack? And he, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, it, uh, it changes things up. It's a, you have to reveal different race crafts, and it gives everybody else the opportunity to choke up some of these fast guys. You're as fast as you say are. Let's see if you can get by me. You know. Definitely management of traffic, management of cars around you. Uh, this is basically bringing the whole package of a driver out for display. And uh, you got to prove that you've got all of it, not just you can set the fastest lap and run away from the field. You got to understand how to make a pass, not make a pass, have patience, have aggressiveness, all of that same, all of it at the same time. And it's all about that calculated risk of exactly when do you make that pass or not make that pass. Uh, it's, it's not always the easiest to develop. And um, yeah, here we've got Italo Anzioso who had a great qualifying time. He's in 15th position, down two spots total. He's just finishing, where is he on the ring? We got our track map on the right. Uh, Adam, do you, I wanna hear your attempts at some of these corner names. Jeez, where's, uh, I got it pulled up here, but it's gonna be hard for me to kind of overlay where, uh, who's this we're watching here, is this? Italo Anzioso. Alanzioso. He's our green marker on the on the grid there. Yeah. So I yeah. would say he's coming into Schwalf Ben Swans and a Klein's Krausel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. it. I love it. I love it. And now this is the second carousel with the banked corners he's heading up to. Oh, don't go off just yet. And he saved it just at the very last moment. It looked like he's going to go wide there. And he's taking that banked corners. Oh, and being a little bit conservative on the exit. He just wants to save the car, get to the finish line. And, um, and you know what? Just finish the race. More than some of these other drivers have done. And I feel bad for him, I gotta say. It's a very tough track. Um, I think Yuri Steinmetz, who's had an excellent, excellent run throughout this season, he is, uh, he's one of the very first drivers I've seen challenge the hammer every single race, all season long, and get very, very close in points. Has not had the best of luck in the very back there. Uh, it looks like he crashed out, had some bad luck, and uh, and yeah, Misha Berger, our Swiss friend, uh, I don't think he had great luck either. Uh, he's got some inflammation in his left foot, and left foot braking is pretty difficult. And uh, when you're right foot braking in this car, that's also pretty difficult. So yeah, Adam, have you ever tried that right foot braking? I'm actually uh, a, naturally a, a right foot breaker, and um, uh, when I got into sim racing during the COVID there, I, I saw everyone doing this trail break, and I fell in love with the Porsche, and I slowly started learning. So now I'm a, I'm a left foot breaker, but it's weird, you know, sometimes I get hurt or stuff from, from riding and stuff, and I'll go back to my right foot, and sometimes it's hard to tell which one I'm faster at. It's, it's one of those things. <laughs> and... 
here is our results from that race. There are some people not named in that top 10. Let's go through that right now. We've got Phil Pammer, of course, was the winner of that race. We got Patrick Hinkson in second, Bjorn Ritter in third, Al Thorsten Seifert in fourth, the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon, Alexander Wilfred in fifth. Ryan Winfeld in six. The sound of that engine, absolutely beautiful. I love it. Uh, Jason Lyons in seventh in that reverse grid. Look at him go. He's really going to have to put this final race together if he wants to keep his championship hopes of amateur division alive. Emil Koopman sneaks his way into the reverse grid top eight. We'll be starting in first. Thomas Worm Jr. is in ninth. Gurkin Demir in tenth. Uh, toughing it out with that... that uh, the, the bonnet all gone actually paid off. Danny Hugendorn in 11th, Rob A. West in 12th. Uh, finishing the race, great drive from Rob West. Steve Kleis, Kle, Kle, Kleis, Kleis in 13th, Duncan Watts in 14th after his incident, Tal Anzioso in 15, Corey Lazarus 16, Gordon Ramsay 17, Philip Straffarelli in 18. So after that race, uh, have your three points for the race changed? Uh, maybe a little bit. I think um, those guys starting at the top of the grid, you know, uh, make sure, you know, we, where those guys are coming, try to avoid any carnage of the fast guys coming by. And like you mentioned earlier, Mike, you make a mistake, uh, put it behind you. Don't don't dwell on it. Put it behind you and catch back up. Uh, just the same type of mentality we all should be using in our personal lives. Something bad happens, move on, keep pushing and charge the front. And you saw that with Ryan. I mean, he had that big crash and he got back out there and boom, up back up to sixth. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's really easy to get caught up in all those emotions and, and that moment that happens. And, uh, you know, you just got to put it aside like instantly or else you're going to get caught up in a lot more moments than just that one. Yeah, you start making those mistakes and you start letting those negative thoughts come into while you're driving and, and you don't want that, right? You want to have that clear, uh, nail a couple corners after a mistake and then you get that momentum again and start getting those positive uh, vibes going and next thing you know, you're moving through the pack. Well, and here we go, Jason Lyons starting at the very front. I, uh, with uh, <laughs> Emil Koopmans in first, I can't wait to see how this goes. Uh, and Wilford, look at that, not far off of Lions. This is going to be intense. Ryan Winfeld, uh, who knows the Nürburgring very, very well, is going to want to get that good start, get up there ahead with Emil Koopman, so he's not blocked off from the slower drivers for too long. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. How are Hingston and Hammer get through the pack, how Winfield settles in, and uh, Lions own it, man. Take a start and go for it. And here we go, Thomas Worm Jr. not gritting. The lights are up. The lights are off and the lights are off and away we go. Brian Winfield getting that great start. It looks like Thorsten Seifer getting an excellent start as well. Here we go, heading into turn one. Wilford trying to get up the inside, not able. Oh, and Wilford is able to make it up the inside on Lions. Nice this is incredible. What a move. What a move. Wilford wants the amateur division championship. He wants it right now and he's trying to get ahead. This is absolutely incredible awesome. what Lyons is not having it he is racing him for every inch possible and he's gotten right back ahead of Wilford this is incredible and Patrick Hinkson has filtered his way through the field and is now in to fourth position where is the hammer is he going to be punching back at Hinkson from oh and here we go Hinkson is now ahead of Ryan Winfeld this is absolute chaos at this race start the hammer is in seventh position only up one spot total uh you know luckily it's a very long race to go and Patrick Hingston doesn't think about that he just wants to get by now uh, oh no oh. oh that is an unfortunate moment for Winfield luckily he did not take anyone with him that is um, very unfortunate but also very very lucky <laughs> it's weird I see Ryan off in the dirt like I don't think much of it I'm like ah he'll pull out of it uh, but luck ran out caught him that time yeah, I don't think that he wanted to do that. I don't think he uh, he wanted to meet that barrier quite yet. Uh, but unfortunately, he did. He had a date with the barrier, and it just didn't go well. Oh, man, I love that move, Winfield, and, uh, and Lions going off to start that. That's awesome. 
Absolutely wild. Patrick Hankston already up in the fourth position, making all those passes. Oh no, and Ryan Winfeld has gone off. That is gonna hurt his chances for this race. Hopefully his steering wheel is not bent. He is swarmed by these cars who are all on the same team. That's, uh, you know what? That That is intimidating, I gotta say. Oh yeah, stuff's coming at the uh, Lions. They're real fast right now after that crash. He's just trying to like, oh, what have I done? Get back on track. How does the car feel? Is the alignment off? Just, just pull it together and do the best you can. And just as we are saying, keeping your head down, even in moments of peril, is super, super important. Just get it back together instantly. And that's exactly what Jason Lyons has done right here. He's trying to shake that off, and you can see it. Oh, it looks like is this Danny Hugendorn challenging Thorsten Seifert as we're heading. Our, oh, and not able to get up alongside Danny Seifert, but these guys are battling it out every possible moment. Oh, and Thorsten Seifert making a move. Oh, no. That is an election. Oh, nice breaks there, Ramsey. Oh, he's just kind of toe. That un Damn, rough round for Ramsey. That's a shame. Bummer to see that. That is definitely another rough Man round lines. for Ramsey. Uh, very unfortunate situation that Gordon couldn't control too much of there. Uh, Thorsten Cypher making a move and just a little bit of an unfortunate situation happening. And uh, yeah, don't normally see that of Thorsten Cypher, so I'm a little bit surprised by that one. But uh, you know what? For some drivers, it's... Um, it's working out. They're uh, they're going to capitalize on the the suffering of others. Uh, for Jason Lyons, though, that's very uh. very unfortunate for his amateur division run. Alexander Wilford now many positions ahead. Let's look at where is Wilford. Wilford's up there. He's doing pretty well. But uh, you know, Lyons got to stay. Just keep circulating. Keep cutting laps. You never know what could happen to Wilford there. Even though Wilford's driving great, um, just stay out there. Keep keep circulating so so is that right we got winfield in the leads yeah Koopman's no it's not something nope. is going on with my timing pat tower let's just do interval here looks like no that's because ryan winfield is in the pits so as soon as they cross the pits ah. the timing tower will correct itself but you can see exactly how long till they cross the pits you got 12.5 kilometers to go for emil Koopman's who's being, or being chased by Patrick Hinkson. I want to see where is the hammer. So it looks like the yep. hammer is up three positions total. Nice. And he's in fifth spot. He's closing in on Bjorn Ritter. Uh, so Hammer has chosen to take the slow and steady route off of the start rather than the fast and aggressive. Uh, it looks like may maybe both will pay off, maybe not. Yeah, it's hard to tell, right? Like Hammer, that's kind of his style, just to pick guys off. And and throughout the, the beginning of the year, he could do that style, but I, I think he found out midway through that, hey, guys are getting faster, he's got to move quick. And, and fortunately for him, he's put in his points and he could roll around in this position easily win the championship and um, so let's see how he plays it out he doesn't want to throw it away either yeah so patrick hinkson has closed the gap as they head into the carousel for the very oh. first time three more laps of this corner uh, i gotta say the carousel is one easy place to lose it and uh, here we go huh? they still have enough sunlight to see the track the sun is starting to set as you can see as it's uh, setting on this season a little bit of a metaphorical uh race a little bit of metaphorical experience oh and emil koopman going a little bit wide patrick kingston capitalizing on that mistake of car 911 and he is now through into p1 there you go let's see if emil can uh, latch on i was fortunate to watch some of uh koopman's stream the other day when it was some kind of uk uh race here as well and he did he had an awesome race it was a good battle i think he got a podium but man he was driving excellent so Jason, uh, right now, just following along with Gherkin Demir, whose car has been repaired after that break. So it's all looking fresh and sparkly new, being followed by Steve. No, this is Phil Straffarelli. Corey Lazarus, not too far back. Actually had a much better start this time around. Uh, he wants to try and keep his third position in the season. We'll have to tally up the points after this race and see if he is able to make it happen. Rob West is doing really well. Oh, and Gherkin, something's happened to Gherkin Demir. Oh, 
Oh, and that's unfortunate. He must have touched the grass, hit a curb, and he's gone off the track. He's not going to have a good time. His car is damaged once again. Ah, bummer. It looks like he's pulling to the right there, too. So, ah, bummer for Gherkin, our, our OG PCC guy. Oh, uh, Thorsten Seifert is... Oh, Thorsten Seifert is... Okay, we covered that earlier. We got now Rob West. He's up in... He had, he's exactly where he started in 12th position. Corey Lazarus is up five spots. Wow, what a beautiful drive. Um, I'm going to take a look at Patrick Hingston, though. Once again, at the very front, he's now built a nice, sizable gap to Emil Koopmans. Emil Koopmans is under fire from two drivers behind yes. him, of Bjorn Ritter and Philip Hammer. These are two drivers I would not want behind me. <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. I wouldn't want those guys breathe it down my that'd be pretty uncomfortable Emil he seemed when I watched the stream he seemed pretty cool pretty aggressive guy uh, behind the wheel too um, so I think this isn't too far out for him but uh, you know and there we go Bjorn Ritter making a move Philip Hammer making three wide three as they wide. head down this long straight on the Nürburgring oh and Philip Hammer oh. choosing to back out he wants to leave it too wide he wants to survive this race Emil Koopman's backing out of that and he's now lost two positions but he's able to carry on and you know he's still in fifth position it's not a bad spot to be he's got a great draft that he can follow and uh, you know sometimes taking it the safe route is the better way yeah, especially in that spot, it could go bad real quick. It's such a high speed uh, way to way to fall. And then Koopmans, he's not really in the points. He might be able to grab a couple spots on Koopmans and Winfield. Oh, and there. there's the hammer making a pass on Bjorn Ritter in the turn one, turn one of many <laughs> on <laughs> Bjorn Ritter. Right? On Bjorn Ritter, Bjorn Ritter has a little bit of front arrow damage. I think I see there, and that's just allowed the hammer to get ahead and uh, Bjorn, the hammer is now going to be looking to build that gap and get up to Patrick Hingston, who's not that far ahead, I gotta say. Pa Philip Hammer's only three seconds behind, so you never know. Jason Lyons, who's just staying consistent and being the, the steady Eddie, is he is one, two, three, four, five spots behind Alexander Wilford. So if my math is correct, he needs to gain one more spot, and Wilford stays where he's at, and it clinches his amateur division title wow so it's not over yet let's, let's see what happens keep pushing keep pushing lions keep pushing i know he didn't want to race this race i was talking with him uh personally talking with him before the race he was uh i'd say quite nervous he um nervous and also i'd say scared of this track he's um and intimidated it's it's definitely an intimidating track to drive he uh wasn't feeling too confident about it and then just before the race starts he put in two good laps and said you know what i'm joining this race i'm gonna do it and look what's happening he's having a great drive i gotta say uh, yeah that's awesome good kudos for him for you know pulling his putting his boots on there and getting out there that's the best way to learn i mean i, I had the same feelings you know but there's no way i wasn't going to race it it's a, it turns out to be a great learning experience but it is it's uncomfortable driving for me way over my head a lot of the time on this track oh and just as we switch to the battle of steve Kleis and phil straffarelli uh steve Kleis goes a little bit wide phil not able to uh predict that little bit of an incident that uh, that steve had and get around him so he's still stuck behind him and he now has some front end arrow damage so that's going to hurt his run for the next two and a half laps yeah, Phil, Philip Straffarelli, that's our only canadian guy in the, in the grid right now eh? so good 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 run for him yeah, we call this the global race, the European global race. European because it's the evening for the European crowd. And global because, you know what, it works out for everyone. Because here in North America, it's either 11.30 a.m. or 2.30 p.m. Somewhere in there. And it's a great time for, for us to gather up the troops worldwide and have them all race together in one big race. And that's our goal here with our Sunday races. Corey Lazarus, actually from Australia... He, this guy, Corey Lazarus, let's switch to, oh wait, something, so there was a pass somewhere. Anyways, let's switch to Corey Lazarus real quick. Corey Lazarus wakes up at four in the morning to join our races. Our race starts at 4.30 a.m. local time to Corey. So this guy is an absolute champion to wake up at this time and race with us all season long. 
That's what's uh, pretty cool about the crew here. You know, we all have families and, and things going on in our personal lives, but you know, you make the little moves like that, get up before anyone, the kids are up, before your wife's up, and you know, they take a couple of races, and it's nothing better than uh, doing some races, especially on, on a Sunday. Sundays, I always thought, were a great day for racing. I agree. It's actually Monday morning for Corey. Jeez. He's in the future. He's in the future. Tell us the future. What is the <laughs> stock? What's the stock market say? Specifically lottery numbers, please. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna just get in my '88 DeLorean. Go, you know. Yeah. So here is Alexander Wilford. Uh, has Danny Hugendorn quick on his tail? So Danny Hugendorn's getting closer and closer. Every single spot for Wilford does absolutely count. So uh, this is really interesting. If Wilford's going to try and fight him off or is he going to let him by? If he loses this spot, I believe Wilford loses the championship of P in P1 for amateur division. So you know what? This spot really does matter for uh, the likes of Alexander Wilford. Wilford's driving great. Uh, I love the aggression right off the start there. No contact, but putting a wheel in there, trying to do everything he can to make it happen. So uh, a root for you there, Wilford. You know, but, but duke it out here. Try to fight for every position you can. And, uh, but Hugendor's no, uh, no slouch. Good luck with that. Definitely. Um, Danny Hugendorn. Uh, he has definitely shown his pace all season long. He is right up there, ready to take P3 in the championships. Uh, he's, I don't think, he didn't have the greatest sprint race. I don't think any of our uh, battle drivers battling for P3 had a great sprint race. They're trying to, I guess, push their luck as best they can, and uh, their luck ran out. Fortunately, they do have a second opportunity to gain some real good points in the feature race, and that's what we're seeing right here. You know, that's actually what I love about the, the double race is, okay, you may not be the season champion and put it together as a whole package, but the opportunity and ability to learn within this format is, it's absolutely amazing. You will not find that anywhere else. Oh, I have to agree for sure. It's put you in those situations that you may never ever put in. You know, when you when you're leading a race, uh, it's a totally different feeling. You know, you got to keep your cool and composure, and and uh, this exposes you to that. And, and it, it's a great learning experience, good or bad, because uh, it's hard to get in those positions sometimes. Yeah, and Danny Hugendorn is closer than ever within half a second. So Wilfred, he's either going to have to uh, just forget about what's in his mirrors or let him by and, and live on happy. I'm, I'm not even sure. I like that car of Wilfred, I gotta say. I think that's an anime of some sort. I'm not sure which anime. Is that it? I don't know anime too well, do you? Uh, no, not the guy for that, but it does look pretty cool. Whatever he's got, a little little glimpse of red in there, and it looks sweet. Is that Meowtini? I like that. I like that. <laughs> I've never actually read that before. I've never seen his car this up close, but I love that a lot. Danny Hugendorn are... Oh, and you can see them getting ah. so much air. Absolutely wild. These guys are hanging their, their cars out to dry, cooling off the top end, the bottom end, and the sides all in one go on Nürburgring. Just let it hang out. You know, Hugendorn wants that podium for the championship in his end, and then Wilford, you know, he's on the edge of, of his as well. So lots, oh, lots to lose for these guys if something goes bad. As they enter that second carousel in the lap, Danny Hugendorn is definitely close enough to try and make a pass down this long straight. Both cars have no aerodynamic da uh, damages. So, you know what? This could be either too wide, or let's see who gives it up, or who fights it, battles it. I'm not sure. And you can see Emil Koopman's up there ahead of them. Uh, if I was Wilford, I would actually let Hugendorn go and let him bring me all the way up to Emil Koopman so I can start maybe think about making a challenge on that position. Uh, that's that's a good idea. I, I'm a little bit lazy like that, I gotta say. <laughs> Danny well, Hugendorn he... making a pass, going up the right side of Wilford. And this is gonna be too wide into the breaking zone. Danny Hugendorn is ahead, but Wilford is not giving it up easy. Oh, and he does concede the position in the end and let him on through. Yep, smart play. Just enough fight there to make them both uncomfortable, but uh, nice play at the end. and. I'm with you, Mike. That's a great strategy. Latch on to this guy. Pull him around. 
you know what? Sometimes it really does pay off to drive lazy. There's been quite a few races I let a guy pass, and then, you know, it's not long after I'm passing him back, and that's uh, that's part of the package that uh, drivers have to develop is. Uh, when do you battle a guy off and not let him buy or when do you let him buy oh and there you go and that's Look exactly that. it that's exactly what i was talking Jeez, about is you let that. a guy buy and you never know what could happen you could be going by him not too long after danny hugendorn wants that spot back though diving up the easy, inside easy. oh will for giving him some respect on the let inside but not much and then they're going too wide into the next corner wilford's gonna have the inside line oh and danny hugendorn concedes the position and says wilford walk on by awesome battle that's great that's a dicey section there too and they're probably on the most familiar part of the track at least for me because it's part of part of the main what do you call that the gp side of it um so everybody know got these lines just wired in <laughs> you know what this is the only part of the track that i know <laughs> yeah that's right i tell myself oh yeah i'm strong in this section uh yeah so is everybody else <laughs> yeah. and i think there's so this is now lap three um I'm going to just pull away from this. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to pull away. This is intense. Danny Hugendorn wants by. Wilfred wants oh. to stay ahead. Oh, and Wilfred's getting a little bit wild. Oh, and that's allowed Danny Hugendorn to break through. And I'm so glad I did not pull away from this battle. That was actually... Wow. So squeak by. Wilford, the um, able to, uh, by the seat of his pants, keep control of his car and not lose it, not take out Danny Hugendorn. I gotta say that was quite some driving from Wilford, even though he lost that position. That is a beautiful save. <laughs> These oh, cars with the rear engine, as you know, Adam, it's not easy to keep hold of that. <laughs> no, that's for sure. You can break away and it just snaps out of your hand sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I want so to. Lions is catching a little bit to Rob West. There, he's got you know. I've been seeing that dwindle down six seconds to Rob West. Uh, so Wilford, yeah, geez, he, he needs that Hugendorn position, but we'll see. Lions got some damage there. Uh, Mike? Lions, I think he has a little bit from that uh, incident we saw earlier with Thorsten yep. Cipher. That unfortunate incident, uh, Thorsten Cipher getting aggressive and, and I guess just not having any luck really. Lions trying to make his own luck and continue on and that's exactly what you're seeing here up into ninth position even after that incident. Rob West is up in eighth making his own luck as well. He has not had much this week at the Nürburgring. Uh, yeah, I gotta say for the American drivers coming on over it's it's quite a challenge uh, I know some of these guys they basically live on this track and uh, it's a lot of track to remember yeah it's something I need to I'm not a big fan of this one but I, I am slowly starting to take a liking to it but it's one that you just got to put in the work you know memorize all that stuff put the laps in uh, it's punishing but um, you know I dare I say it was a little bit satisfying a couple of times where I nailed those laps that are sub 830 for me yeah those felt good I've just I got notification that I've missed a pass that's happened between Corey Lazarus and Italio Anzioso let's take a look at how did Corey Lazarus break on through oh that is a brave place to pass I gotta say and Corey Lazarus made it happen fortunately for him Italio Anzioso has that front end damage and that's going to slow him down and make it easier for him to pet to make it on through. That's Corey's gonna collect some more points there. Next on his list is Lions, but uh, well, nine seconds behind. Lions still hovering. Oh, he just broke the six seconds behind Rob West there, so could happen. Well, with Lion, yeah, you got about a lap and a half left. I gotta pull up this track map and see exactly where is everyone at. Uh, I'm actually gonna change it to position so you can see who's in what position, how far away they are from the next one. So you can see where P1 is, where P2 is, and all the way down that line. Well, look at uh, something must have happened to Hingston. It was seven seconds, or maybe I'm reading the one as a seven, but now it's a one second behind, hammer behind Hingston. Really. No, you're reading that correct. Patrick Hingston may have made a little bit of a mistake. He done goofed, and he's got card number 60 right up on his tail, 1.3 seconds. That is not what you want to see in your rearview mirror. Oh, no. Nope. That's, that's, here we go. It's going to be a dogfight to the finish. 
And uh, so this is totally a battle of uh, what are you going to go with? Uh, fast and quick on the starts or slow and easy, conservative and steady Eddie? Uh, Hammer's chosen the conservative route as we've seen. And you know what? Both paid off, but Hammer may have saved his tires. Yeah, could be. Um, you know, he doesn't have to do this for the championships, but it's more of like uh, the North America versus the European kind of um, fight here. So let's see it. Hammer, throw down, throw caution in the wind, let him have it. See if he can catch up to Hinkston and make a pass and, and Hinkston hold on. And I actually want to take a look at how did Hingston make all of those passes at the race start. Here we go. Here is the race start with Hammer in the middle. Hingston being brave under braking and taking advantage of the gaps that were opened up for him. And that's exactly how he got through. It looks like this is intense. I, I'm watching this again. My, nice. my heart rate is absolutely flying, I got to say. Just making that look easy. Wow. Just and you know what? That wasn't even risky. That was perfectly calculated the entire way to break through that field. And uh, and that's how we've arrived at where we're at right here. What I'd give to make passes like that on fast guys around the outside, I, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, I love that corner. I don't know the name of it, but I absolutely love it. Watching these fast guys blow through it with everything they've got gaining air. Patrick Hingston saw the hammer in his rearview mirror and started pushing that throttle down even harder. He's actually created a little bit of a bigger gap than was there previously. Uh, so Hammer's gonna have to start trying even harder if he wants to get up alongside Patrick Hingston. Yeah, Where he needs to like get away, get it, get try to big a big of his gap as he can. Once um, Hammer can get some of that draft on those big long straightaways, it's just gonna be the, uh, a dog fight to the finish that's for sure we're gonna have next season we're gonna have the hammer and the hingston oh boy that's gonna <laughs> be wild and I, I see you know it seems like the um more and more entries come along so we could have some sleepers pop in and uh get in there with them mix it up with them as well yeah, um, I've got a few notifications for some crashes. I want to take a look at exactly how that happened. Uh, Yuri Steinmeitz crashed. I want to see how that one happened. Self-inflicted injury by the looks of it. Uh, once again, Yuri Steinmeitz, I don't think he's a fan of this track, just like myself. Oh, and he just, you know what? He gets decided to give it on up. Oh, wow. I want to see Duncan Watts has crashed. How did this one happen? Self-inflicted injury, I believe so. Easy on that good looking car there, Duncan. Oh! <laughs> and I see Italianzioso crashes. I don't know if this is a crash. This may just be, oh! Nope, nope, that's Italianzioso. Oh! Oh, and that's where the front end damage came from. Lazarus got tinged. Is that Rob West creeping around there? I think it was. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Up to eighth. Nice, nice drive. Way to there we go. That, Rob. Yeah. Rob West having the drive of his life on a track that he really didn't like, and maybe he likes it a lot more now. <laughs> yeah, I always get a kick out of people saying, oh, it's my favorite track, favorite track. Well, is it your favorite track because you win at it all the time, or is it something about the layout? But n nine times out of ten, it's because they actually go good and it fits their driving style. But me, I have a hard... I love all kinds of tracks, and like I say, even this one's coming around to me. <laughs> so Patrick Hingston, for the lead of this race, has the Philip Hammer directly behind him. Philip Hammer is able to close that gap, get up to car number 93, and they have one lap to go. They are just heading off of the GP track right now as we speak onto the ring. And, uh, oh my gosh, this They're is going to be man. tight. They are good. pushing. Are off. They are pushing. Awesome, they are using... Guys every inch of that track going all the way right to that barrier maximizing track width maximizing their engine horsepower all the way to the very end patrick hingston just how did he do that create a gap of he just wow in a matter of yeah, five corners put down point uh, seven tenths of a gap seven eight tenths of a gap to the hammer this is never seen before footage of the hammer losing a gap <laughs> yeah seriously 
man, that's crazy. And it's, it's for for my eyes, it's like Hammer ain't doing anything wrong. He's absolutely flying. Where did that gap come from? But the subtle little things these guys are able to do, and that's what makes them so so good and so unique. They're able to find those little things. I mean, look at the the play Hankston made picking those guys off the start. I mean, that was uh, that was a beautiful uh, artwork there. He was pulling off. Oh, the artwork is the absolute best word i've got the weather on the bottom right of our screen as the sun is setting on the final lap of our race the final lap of our season we got an 18 celsius track temperature so this is perfect for everyone to manage those tires go as fast as they can and not worry too much that they're going to destroy their car hopefully so let's just pull that away um let's see is there any drivers you'd like to see, Adam? I mean, West is holding on there. He's, you know, lost a second to Lions that entire last eight, ten minutes there. So it's going to be hard for Lions to make another move there. Lazarus, uh, you know, settling in. Um, another awesome drive by Richo there. I mean, look at that uh, amateur driver up on the podium. Great drive. And Koopman, so, you know, for some reason, I expected a little more speed out of him from when I was watching him, but maybe... Maybe something's off. Uh, who knows? Um, and Danny Hugendorn driving great right there. Not too far behind Koopman. So let's see what happens. I got to say, this is one of those tracks that um, you either know it or you don't. And uh, mm. I'm on the I don't. And Emil Koopman's may be on the same uh, same field as me. Uh, people who are slow everywhere else all of a sudden are, are blazing, blazing fast on the ring. And uh, that may be the case of what we're seeing for Emil Koopman's versus Danny Hugendorn and Bjorn Ritter and, and the likes. Yeah, it's pretty wild how many DNFs are there. Look at our pro drivers. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them are out of our pro drivers. All of our amateur drivers are still circulating. So so kudos to those guys and uh, pro guys. You can't take a look at uh, yourself in the mirror. you got some amateur guys just putting it to you. But obviously, some of those DNFs are not self-inflicted, but um, that says something for our amateur growth uh, going on here throughout the season. Oh, the no! Season. And right now, we've got Corey Lazarus catching up to Jason Lyons. That is not going to help Jason Lyons in his amateur division run. If he makes a pass here, it may tie him with Alexander Wilford. Holy smokes. And Holy Lazarus, smokes. Lazarus wants the price to keep in that podium. I can't believe this. Down to the very last lap, to the very last of the very last race. Wow. Yeah, I mean... Whatever happens there, Lions, uh, uh, kudos to you. You've been putting it down. You haven't given up. I know your car's got some damage there. You, you're slugging it out. Um, it sure doesn't want to see that white car uh, coming up on the back, coming up from behind it. And especially for me, when I see him pass me, and I see Lazo on the back of his bumper there. It, uh, I got to grip my teeth because he just slips away from me, that Lazarus guy. Let's see. Lazo right there. Yeah, yeah I know that back end uh, too well. I had enough of this view there, Mike. <laughs> uh, there you go. It's funny. So, <laughs> so Emil Koopmans, oh, and he's oh. been, Emil Koopmans has been passed by uh, Danny Hugendorn. So let's take a look at it, how did that one happen. Here we go in the replay. Oh, heading up the hill. Emil Koopmans getting pushed too wide, and it looks like he backs off the throttle just a tad and lets him on by. I want to take a look. And also, Stro Phil Straffarelli has crashed. Uh oh. And that's going to bring uh, Jason Lyons up closer to Alexander Wilford. So that's going to help him. Let's see how bad of a crash was oh. it. Oh, and that's going to hurt his. Oh, that's going to. Luckily, he's able to carry on. I see Duncan Watts has crashed as well. Once again, Duncan Watts has crashed. Last replay, I swear to you. And then we're going to go back live. Oh, that's a tough corner. Oh, and that's that braking zone, that really tough braking zone. Keep going, though. So Duncan Watts, can feed, as long as he keeps finishing off, he could say he beat Winfield, beat Ramsey, beat Steinmetz, Thomas Worm, because you, know, you got to be in it to win it, and uh, he's still going. Corey Lazarus has made up that gap 
to Jason Lyons. <laughs> so this is intense. I want to actually take a real quick jump to the leader of our race, Philip Hammer and Patrick Kingston. Patrick Kingston still in the lead, going around that carousel for the very last time, heading towards that long back straight. Uh, Patrick Kingston two seconds ahead of the Hammer, creating an even bit of a bigger gap here to the hammer hammer's not able to make use of that draft to draft too far away to um get up alongside patrick kingston has one more breaking zone left before he's wow. won this race wow the Pat hammer kingston really putting uh putting a statement there you know letting letting them know that hey next season i'm gonna be in this with you and uh this is what you're gonna need to contend with so wow what a what a battle both these guys driving all the way to the finish let's you just think about that four laps about eight minutes a lap and this is how close they're coming to the end unbelievable absolutely unbelievable and here is i'm actually gonna okay i just want to take a quick peek at exactly what's happening here and then head back to the leader okay and here you go patrick hinkson this is the final breaking zone as he's heading on to the start finish line straight and about to come across that finish line for the win of this race. Congratulations, Patrick Hingston, as he's getting the flashing lights from Philip the Hammer for quite a race, quite a drive. Congratulations, Philip the Hammer, for winning this season championship once again and second place in our race. Bjorn Ritter, amateur, no longer wow. rounding nice out the drive. podium of our race. Wow, Good what a beautiful drive. Off your amateur career there. Nicely done. Danny Hugendorn making it through. Emil Koopman's to grab fourth place up seven spots total. Emil Koopman starting at the very front, down four spots uh, in a real great spot. Uh, Alexander Wilfert in sixth nice place. Drive, I, great I, drive. Yeah. Philip Stra Straffarelli able to collect his himself nice. collect himself and bring it home up eleven spots total in seventh. Rob West, what a drive. And we've got Corey oh, no, Lazarus. No! Lazarus Corey Lazarus line. has made it through. Yeah. Oh, race. Corey Lazarus makes it on through. He needs every point as much as he can get, just as Jason Lyons, and he crosses the line in ninth. Jason Lyon in tenth. Let's just take a quick look at how did that pass happen as they head down that back straight. Corey Lazarus taking the left lane position and just making his way through. Jason Lyons giving it up easy potentially yep jason lyons just giving wow. it up easy wanting to survive happy with the spot he was at and that's how he ended up in 10th spot italianzi also coming across the finish line right about now in 11th position gherkin demir um a little bit of uh, of wall a little bit of luck he's coming across flashing those lights is he able to finish that car it looks like it's wagging his tail might, might be an electrical issue actually <laughs> blinking away yeah <laughs> and um yeah actually you know what that might be an electrical issue it's gonna no, be hard really? to see <laughs> with all that front end damage uh you never know <laughs> wild danny passed a emil he did pass emil yep um we i think we caught that let's see let's just go through that replay again how did danny pass yep we caught that replay perfect uh, nice. And there is Gherkin Demir coming across the finish line. And I think that he is our last driver to pass. The Nurburgring has client claimed many victims once again. We almost have half the field. Wild. almost half the field. And there's Corey Lazarus just having Corey's fun with it. Blowing off some steam. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And if there's any takers for an interview, uh, just jump on into our Discord for the interview booth, and uh, yeah, uh, and I'll bring you on in. And we actually have our first taker of Patrick Hingston. Uh, let it. Let me bring. Move into here. We go with Patrick Hingston. Hey, Patrick, how's it going? How about you? Doing pretty good, man. How are you feeling winning that race? Congratulations, I gotta say, on winning that race. What a grand drive. How are you feeling? Oh, good. <laughs> so, so, sorry, go on. Never mind, you go. <laughs> I was just gonna say that um, the Philip the Hammer has had quite the run in the Euro Global Division, and um, we've been noticing all. Um, 
all, all race long today that um, it's almost as if you're testing yourself for next season because we see your intentions to run the global division next season and uh, see how you can do. So was this a bit of a test pilot run against the hammer? Uh, I, yeah. Yeah, you definitely made it uh, what the crowd wanted to see. I mean, both both the sprint and the feature, two of our fastest guys head to head like that. That was uh, awesome driving, awesome race. It was, it was really fun to watch. You guys were flying. Phil was catching up to me like at the end though, like the last two laps. But um, the thing is, you can't really follow if you're like around the same pace. So. Oh, how is that? If you're around the same pace, you have a lot of that. Um... Uh, the arrow wash, it must be really hard to get uh, close enough to make a pass. Yep. Especially because, <laughs> like, how much corners there are on the track and stuff. So, yeah. skill testing question how many corners? Uh, <laughs> I think it's around 167. <laughs> We're we're gonna fact check you later. <laughs> oh, okay, that's pretty good. I'll do uh, that right now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we also noticed that race start. That is quite a race start that you had. What were you thinking going into that race start? What was your plan? Uh, just be aggressive, really. That's all. One hundred and seventy corners. Good guess there, uh, Patrick. <laughs> oh, I see. Wow, that's unreal. Yeah. Uh, my. I was just trying to be aggressive at the start because I knew um, if I pull a gap now, then it's going to be hard to catch up. So, yeah. Definitely. Well, those moves you made at the start were a thing of beauty, Patrick. I think Mike's <laughs> got it here in slow-mo here. Was, wow, it was sweet. I got to say, that was actually a strategy that worked out. It's a little bit of a gamble if you go for the aggressive moves and take that risk right off the, the start. Uh, sometimes it pays off, and sometimes it puts you into a wall. It really paid off for you. Uh, the door was left wide open, and you just walked on through just right. And, uh, yeah, congratulations on the win of this race. Thanks. Is there anyone on track out there or family, friends that you'd love to give a shout out? Let's start with on track. Who would you like to give a shout out to of all those drivers out on track? I'd like to shout out everyone who's participated in this league and making this season a, a great season. Um, shout out to my whole family and shout out to uh, Apex Tech Racing Supply and Pro Sim Race. I got to ask, actually, do you get your family to watch all these races back with you? Uh, I, my dad watches them sometimes. <laughs> That's oh. awesome. That's awesome. And with that, that is the end of our Euro Global Division. We're going to have to tally up the points of all of the divisions and see who won the amateur. Philip Hammer, clean and clear for the Pro Division. Uh, we're not sure who's going to be in second or third. We'll, we'll let everyone know shortly, but uh, that commences the end of our race, the end of our season. Congratulations once again, Patrick Hingston. And I guess I'll see you guys all later. Yep, congrats. Take Thanks, Mike. Take care, guys. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day, y'all.